Okay, what's going on, guys? And welcome to a brand new episode of Energize. In 2023, Ross, introduce the guest, man. Today, we have the head coach of Team Rhino, Mr. Andy Ryan, and commentator to the stars, the one and only Paul Reds or Rebend. Lads, how are you doing? Yeah, right, not guys. bad, yeah. Happy New Year, there, lads. Unbelievable is right, Baz. Unbelievable. He, he's Baz got a few new tools on, on, on the whip now, and uh, he's just he's gone a bit uh, trigger happy. Yeah, Ross, uh, for Christmas. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, lads. Uh, we have you on here to talk 2023 and uh, see what see what the lads have in store. But uh, looking back on 2022, Andy, what was the highlight uh, for yourself? A few highlights. Nadine winning the World Championships, I think, was a big one. That was everyone's um, highlight. Yeah, and I think as well for me, because I took a step back and uh, because I got delayed going over with COVID, so I couldn't get over for the first week. And I stood back and, and, and I let um, Kieran and Jerry do the corner, even though I was there. I didn't want to upset the, the team. And I think that was a big, big part of it. And I think the lads did a great job. So that was one. Uh, the Super Cup. The Super Cup was really, really good. Um, a, a lot of people don't realise how big of an achievement that was. I don't think it's going to happen again. The look of the draw was with us with Russia getting taken out of the event and the draw we got. We had a great team. The team was really, really good, an experienced team. And to come second in the Super Cup, it's a massive achievement. We were the last rate ranked team. You know, we got the rub of the dice with the with the with the draw. It was very good. So that was the start of the year. Yeah. Um, and then the Belfast uh, Cage Warrior show uh, was really, really good. And and all the fights James Sheen has had this year. You know, we've a lot of good kids out there competing. Win or lose, I don't give a shit. Once they, once they give 110% in there. So, you know, there was some big, big, some big, big things for us. I think the, the Irish Championships, the IMF Irish Championships, we took a lot of medals. Mm. We trained really hard for that, you know. So, you know, <clears throat> we've had a good year. The whole year has been really good. A, a couple of guys that didn't 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 probably do what he could have done. I didn't be, didn't believe in himself the way we said. Reza might believe in them. Um. I Jamie, thought you were calling out Reds are there for a second. No, no, no. <laughs> like Jamie Bizzard, I think, um, didn't reach his full potential. He's very good and he doubts himself sometimes. Um, I think he could have really won that title in England just there before Christmas. Um, he was great in the tournament. You know, so he's hot and cold. He's one that I think can, can make a big, big move, big move this year. But the whole year's been really good. The whole year, to be honest with you. And and then uh, what what about yourself, Reds? Or uh, how did it feel to f- uh, step into those new shoes? Uh, doing the Cage Warriors commentary, doing doing the grappling, being the best dressed man on the mats and uh, in, uh, in the Polaris. That's all down to the Tammy. They're the ones that have got the respon- uh, with sponsorship and stuff. So uh, big thanks to them. So, um, but yeah, they've some some of the coolest gear on the market. And uh, I, I, think <laughs> we, I think everyone actually loved the pink uh, the pink leopard print because I, yeah. I hadn't got it. I had my own set of gear going over like from the time it was like blue or something. They said no, we want we want you to wear this if you don't mind putting it on us. Yeah, no problem. The Camel showed me that. I said, Fuck, let's go! Like, but, uh, <laughs> cool. so. Got to do that at the start of the year. I think I'm back on with Polaris maybe in March. I think they're, uh, they're running the cards. I'm going to start picking up training now. Uh, Don't mind if he's bleeding arm doesn't work. He won't be doing that. Mind him. Mind him. <laughs> Polaris in March. I'm going to do that again. Um, and yeah, it was, it was really cool uh, to do that in Belfast. Or Cage where I, was, I was actually over in where we Manchester. Was it for James? Uh, yeah. Fighting, or Liverpool really or good. Memphis. Yeah, really good. And, Oh, he was talking to Paul Dollery and Ian Dean and Graham and, met, and buzzing off all them. And uh, I was like, right, I'm not fighting. What I would like to do is something which is, I don't know what it is. And then it was sort of left at that. We were just messing about. And then I was in Dubai with uh, young Adam Darby training away. And uh, yeah, a little text came in from Paul Dollery. He just said, here, do you fancy doing the Belfast card? And then I did it and I thought it was, uh, thought it was great. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, will we see on on, uh, on the mics for Dublin? I'm assuming so. I haven't haven't, haven't uh, been talking to them uh, yet. Um, I know they only ran the, the show there not, la- uh, not last night, the night before. So I'd say they just have all their phones off and that, you know what I mean? Um, but I'd imagine so. Uh, Andy, is that something nice for you to see when your uh, retired for is now staying in the sport and uh, making a few bob doing something else in it? Yeah, well, it sort of annoys me that Reza didn't doesn't get the, the the sort of the praise or the acknowledgement of what he's done. He's fought in every promotion mm-hmm. around. But for me, he was hard done by a couple of promotions, and, and, and I've told him so. I'm not the best 
we're not the best team with some of the big promotions because we tell them, you know, you, you use certain fighters and stuff. I do think Reds are going to go further than he did. Um, I think he just got to the age there where um, you got a little bit old, didn't you, Reds? Are? But it's great to see him on the mic, you know what I mean? But but I still think, like, I might take him out of retirement this year, give him another little blast. <laughs> We'd love to see it, Baz. You'd pay, you'd pay to see Red, Reds are back in there one more time, wouldn't you? Look, obviously, we'd love to see Reds are back. And, like, I know you were asking Reds are about the uh, Cage Warriors Dumbling being on the mic. Would you be interested in getting on that card, Reds, or for one last dance right in front of your hometown? No, look, Andrew, saying, uh, my arm t- t- genuinely doesn't work proper. Um, I, can't, I can't even throw a jab. And we've been doing some stuff with uh, Dr. Out Malahoyd and um, with some platelet replacement therapy in it. Um, got a couple of stem, so- stem cell injections into it. So just sort of, sort of waiting on that to heal. Basically, if, but if I can't get it properly, I, I, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't do myself justice in there. And you'd only see a fraction of what I used to be, you know. So I wouldn't get in if I wasn't there, if I wasn't healthy. And and, and we don't need to back in. It was a title fight or a big promotion, you know, came looking. We might do something that he financially gets something healthy. You know what I mean? It's not, it's dead. the days are gone to just take the fight for fucking getting on the poster. You know what I mean? Fuck that, like. Yeah, well, the point is the 155 pound belt is more likely going to be vacated by George Hardwick in the build-up to UFC London. So that was just uh, why I put it out there. Does he sign the UFC? He will be. He will be. They, signed, they, only, they just signed that. Uh, the, the Don't get Scottish it. Anyway. He's very uh, good. Yeah. The, 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 was he Scottish? No, Scottish Christian Scottish. Leroy Duncan. I think you're thinking Duncan, of uh, the problem Duncan. He was also yeah. signed to the UFC. <laughs> yeah, no, no, they just signed that guy from uh, Cage where he's, he didn't fight yeah. um, Jesse Taylor. Did I I've seen that in Scotland now, that fella. No, no, there's another Duncan who's from Scotland. But this yeah. Duncan's from London, I think. Is he? He is. Yeah. He's there's a the black guy that and he comes out, does uh, the, the, the one handed cartwheels, flash kicks, and all that type of stuff. Good. Yeah, yeah, they just signed good. him. He, he was meant to fight the night for the belt. Yeah. Well, he is, but they just they signed him an enemy, so fair play to him. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's unbelievable. So watch the flyaway fight. Yeah, did yeah. Uh, yeah Creasy yeah. versus Hack. Yeah, but yeah. Hack is around bleeding years. He's met the fight series like 2011 or something, maybe 2012. He was on form. He was killing everybody. Him. He was really good. And he went yeah. missing then. Did he get injured or something happened or what happened to him? He, he seemed to go off the boil because that was a rematch. He fought Creasy before, I think, in yeah, like, 2016. Been, I think yeah. it was one of the, one of the missed. Yeah, but he, he, yeah, but he, even before that, like, he, like like ten years ago, he was fucking on the scene killing people. Yeah. You know, he was meant to be the next big thing because we were trying to match him with Siri and it never happened. In the time yeah. Siri was Cage Warriors World Champion. The Bangladesh on the cruise. Obviously, uh, yeah. not going to like accuse him of anything, but uh, Jake Hadley actually put out a tweet saying that uh, when Saw he was that. fighting him uh, at Cage Warriors, he said that like he was like lacing up his gloves with something harder in them that, that was, he was supposed to and he had to get his hands rewrapped. So like, I don't, I, I, I don't know what, yeah. to, maybe he's got a few... Uh, a few uh, dodgy moments that uh, he's been he's been right. uh, shown by promotions or something. I, I don't know, but uh, that was a, a a seriously accusatory tweet to put out there. But if you had to get the yeah. hands wrapped, obviously uh, they weren't happy. But I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I know in boxing you do, but I'm not too sure in MMA. And you'd have a better idea. You can ask for someone's hand to be rewrapped if you're not happy with them, can you? Well, well, well no, no, no. You, you would you never see them, but the, the guys that sign off on them would okay. see them. So. So it, it, when we go to to, to shows, um, you always have a hand wrapper there that's employed yeah. by this sort of thing. But if you do your own, they have to check. You have to go and get a sign. So Bob or someone is there, or you know, um, you go over there and they check them off and they check them. You know what I mean? Mm. So it would they will be checked anyway by an official. So obviously that's what happened. The official wasn't too blatant and happy. Yeah, no, def- definitely not. Um, Andy. What what I do want to ask you is Cage Warriors yeah. Dublin. How many people do you reckon you'll have on on that card? Because obviously, uh, you know, um, some of the Cage Warriors you have Paddy Wilkinson, Adam Darby, uh, you obviously have James Sheen. How many guys are you looking to have on there? Is there anyone who who's well, not signed with them that you'd like to get signed? Yeah, a, a Constantine. Um, yeah, I, I'd love to get a kick in the ass getting him back on. Um, I'm actually in talks with them to try and put on an amateur card for to start the show off. I think it would be great because when they did it before. There were some great guys on it, you know, mm. and then it will it will open up them for some of the amateur clubs and they, you know sell tickets and, and get yeah. guys on on a big card. So I'm, I'm trying to push that to get five fights on, but let's see what happens, you know. But from air gym going on, um, sorry, 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 Andy, just to interrupt. Sorry, yeah, uh, that's, that's actually a really good idea. And say if you get, like the Irish nationals, if you got like the people that are about to fight in the finals, have the finals on before the Cage Warriors card. That could be pretty good. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. 
Twelve Take for a head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, don't 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 the, the, yeah the, the problem is that I, I i think if you start throwing it that way it's, it's it, i think it has to be you know open to everybody and anybody yeah. so you know let's see what happens and, it, and i think it's yeah. for a promotion like that that it's business it's ticket seller stay yeah. once isn't it really you know um but look yeah, let's I'll, see what I'll, happens. Just, I'll just leave i'll leave you two lads alone right see you. no no <laughs> but i i i, I think i think there is bigger things coming up with the nationals anyway there's yeah. plans for big things coming up like they had that um, youth international open which was very very good so I think there is big plans for national championships coming up and um, done in, in belt sort of levels or, or you know levels which is I think Liam and them are, are pushing that I sort of took a step back from that whole thing but um, mm. I, I'll still be supporting but yeah oh, anyway oh, Cage Warriors oh. unbelievable <laughs> Cage Warriors Dumble, uh, uh, Dublin um, yeah Adam Darby uh, Paddy Wilkinson hopefully if he gets his fucking finger out and comes back training I'm going to put a post. Put a post up there from Williams. Miss it. <laughs> if found, <laughs> return to the team right now. Return to lightweight. James. James has a big tough fight on. Hasn't been announced yet, but we know who it is. I think you know already, but we won't say anything. Um, it's a big fight. And um, I think Reds and Mike and I were touring with a series. <laughs> <laughs> no. But look, if I got, if I got, if I got, if I got Paddy, James and Adam on and Constantine on, I'll be really, really happy. Yeah, that that's what we, that's what we want to see. Like, we want to see one of the longest and biggest cards Cage Warriors have ever put on as well. Like, uh, yeah. Reds, you'll remember the Bama days, and, and you had yeah. uh, we called it Bama Tour. You had Bama and Bellator on a combined show, and there's nineteen fights or something on the card. Like, yeah, but the thing I, I always liked know. about them was that everybody got a shot. It wasn't just one club, um, which is the way Bellator has gone now. Which is, obviously it's just SPG. It's it's the same card what? every time. The, the fighters just get mixed around. But that's essentially what you're saying. Look, I'm no qualms with it. But mm-hmm. I, for me, I just think it's better even when they're fighting on the card or even when you're looking at it. I think it's it's just better when the whole world has all loads of different clubs on. Everyone's getting a crack at the window. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I, for me, that's why I like when Cage Warriors rolls into town. They give everyone a shot. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. and I think as well. I think as well, like, like Bellator is a great show, and then the times we were on them shows, they were good to be on. It's good exposure. And I think there's some great Irish kids not getting a, sh- a shout there, you know, that could be on that. Because it, it is, you look, look at it the, with the rise and, you know, 5-0, and oh, it was some unbelievable fighters, you know, and, and we're sort of, because we're not in SVG, you're, sort of, you're, you're, you're not getting a shot on that card, which mm. is a bit crazy. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I don't think any promotion should be tied to a gym. I think they need to be, no. they need to, like, be open yeah. to all gyms, I think. This um, is number one bullshit. <laughs> uh, but uh, Andy, tell us this: you you decided to step down from um, yeah. head coach for IMA this year. Um, what what made you lead to that decision, and uh, what will that what will your year change look like? Uh, not doing that anymore. So I, I did that voluntary, and I paid me. I think one one trip I got me flights and accommodation. I paid my own way out to all them events. Like, how, like how, all, how long like are you doing, Andy? For three. Well, 2000, at the end of 2016, 17, I jumped in there. So I'm doing it for five years, probably. And yeah. um, I was actually meant to go out with Reds in 2016, but I got food poisoning. So, but I took, I sort of took over officially in 2017. And I've only missed a couple of them um, through things at home. But like, I've been there for most and traveling to all the big events. And it just takes up time. And you know, like this year, Bahrain, I was in Bahrain, I was in, we're out there with the World Force. Then we were there for the, in Bahrain for the Super Cup. And then we got delayed over there another week. So it's time. I suppose with my, I'm 50 this year, so time is, is more valuable to me now. You know, time spent getting things done. And I sometimes I find that you put so much attention and, and, and to, you know, the Irish team or other stuff, you start to lose contact with your own team. And um, the team right now and the team right now are affiliates. Like, we, we, we have a big group to, you know, we can concentrate on our own really and push it. And I think I, I took the eye off the ball a little bit like that. I, try, I spread myself too thin, you know. Um, but look, I'll, I'll still be there to help them out, and I think um, Kieran Darwin's been taking over. It's a thankless job, you know. I was at a, a one of the shows there. I think it was in Rome, not Rome, was it Romania? And a fighter hands me the phone and asked me to fucking record the warm up. Like, hang on, I'm not here to coach. Like, I'm not here to hold a, water, a camera to the warm up. You know, and so, it some wasn't. Fight, it uh, wasn't I'm not going to say, but some fighters wouldn't wouldn't have the, you know. Um, to respect feet in the corner, you know, they don't understand you there as a national coach, giving up your time, your experience, you know, 
I'll be in, yeah, in there. I'll be in the UFC cage doing doing the corner, and yet you go to an amateur event, and, and a fighter doesn't want you in the corner because you're not from the club. They don't understand that national, you know, the national team. Mm. But look, ninety nine percent of them were, were were very good. You know, any anyone that was successful was really good. Uh, you know, ask your questions and, and and would work with you. And you know, like Lee Hammond, I Lee Hammond there. Um, for one of the competitions, he, he got injured and he still wanted to come to the squad. Said, no, Lee, there's no problem. He still turned up. You know, mm. it's guys like that that were had no problem. Or, but if some of the other guys think they're superstars without being a bleeding superstar, without doing the work, you know. So I just think I had enough of it. Um, I don't think people realize how much work goes into it. And I don't think people realize how much Liam and Marlene do. If it wasn't for them, there would be no Ima. And that's the truth of it. They go above and beyond. The same with shows. They go above and beyond. I think it's ridiculous, to be honest with you. Um, I started pushing that. I might take a step back away from the shows and let the shows do their own thing. You know, mm. we just look after I am a type of events. It's too much. You're doing everything for them. And mm. them two guys do everything. They're, you know, they're bleeding super the two of them. And um, you'd be lost without them. You know, so if they take a step back, Irish amateur and is fucked. <laughs> Yeah, well, like, uh, fair play, fair play. What? Marty can slide in there, then it's the head. Yeah. <laughs> can, can Neil see you in his head? He, he knows yeah. exactly what to do. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like Dino was a great man there. Dino Sullivan, he's gone off the, off the, gone the missing list there. Um, he's health wise, he, he sort of took a step back. Hmm. But fellas like that, that had the love for it, and they were, like, we, we were doing it for the love of the sport and to grow the sport. Hmm. We weren't doing it for our individual fighter in the gym. You know, we were doing it for everybody and to get us recognised. And um, that was my goal as well, you know, to get us recognised and to push us and to hit them events, you know, with confidence. You know what I mean? That's the big thing. Uh, Red, yeah, did you no. feel like you, you had to do more for the gym with Andy not being there as much? And, and then... <laughs> no, not so much. I only teach a couple of classes there a week, like, and then if, if I needed to cover, I'd cover. But, or, you know, it's, not, it's not just me up there. There's, there's a whole team of, uh, like, you know, black belts, pro fighters that jump in so it's not just it's never just me like you know yeah no, that's no. a big thing I, I do have great support there so mm. I did a lot of travelling this year like you know um, Bahrain, uh, Bahrain Dubai Abu Dhabi Texas Vegas U- all over the UK and stuff and, and uh, like I have the Sheens there doing striking class or Reds doing Jiu Jitsu class or Siri doing MMA classes Robbie Brennan Howard have loads of coaches and I will be lost without them you know, so it's so it's 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 great for me to have that. It's taking a long time to, to build that sort of coaching team, but I would be lost without them. Don't forget who are Bill McCann. Yeah, I yeah. was just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Redzer, what do you want to see from Team Royal in twenty twenty three? Amateurs and pros on the MMA side. Who are you looking forward to seeing get in there? <clears throat> uh, look to see Jamie Bigger maybe go pro. Um, does he have another amateur fight before jumping in? I don't know because he, you know he is good, but look, Andy was saying it sometimes a kick in the ass to say, Look, yeah, we are good enough to do it. Uh, same with his sister Nadine, I think she is good enough, but she just needs to get stuck in a bit more with the training. That's been honest. And Andy was kicking her ass over the fucking the Christmas when we were up running the hills, you know, getting sick all over the place up on how tilled she was. <laughs> Young fit girl like that was something that shouldn't be happening. So 2003, just kicking the ass with those two. Um, I think James Sheen is going to fight for the Cage Warriors well the way championship this year. Uh, at some point, I think he's definitely good enough. I think what's he on a five five minute streak with him now? I think he's only lost to, to Ian Gary, but he's he, he won it and then went after the fucking UFC. So um, I think he'll fight for the belt sometime this year. Um, who else? Who else? Yeah, I'd like to see Costi back. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. Luke, I know Adam I'd like to see Lewis Bourne and Paddy Morden believe in himself a bit more. They're two massively talented kids, but they don't believe in themselves as much as they do, you know. So, them two need to kick yeah, in the hole as well. That's just one of the things that they just need to figure out. It's not the talent is there, they are good enough. Yeah, very uh, good. It's just a thing in their head, they just need to figure out for themselves. That's all that is. L- L- Lewis, Lewis is, at, is at the Super Cup and he's fighting the reigning world champion, the, the Bahrainian guy. And he fucking was the only fella gave him a fight for the day. Three rounds battle with him, you know, get, g- gave it to him. And uh, it was a tough fight. They came over to me and I said, that kid was very good. And yeah, he loses someone the fight before that in Australia or something stupid. You know what I mean? So it's that it's that consistency he mm. needs. And uh, Paddy Warden said, a little, belief, little bit of belief in it. Um, I think I think Senan has that. You see that Senan has that sort of, I don't care who I'm fighting, I'm going to fucking beat you, you know. Um, but he does it in a nice way. 
you know, he, he doesn't he doesn't do it in a bad way. You know, with the attitude, it's a good attitude. Mm. It's a confident attitude, and I think the lads need to to have that. I think they had it a while ago. They just lost it this year. Uh, you know, yeah. you, you know, you can almost see it in Zen when uh, he was finding an error, and like he basically he st- stared down Tristan Barnett for the entire walkout, and he was in the zone, yeah. and like he, he you knew he was going to put on performance in there. Yeah, uh, a lot he, 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 he he does it. He does it with confidence. But he doesn't do it in a bad way. There's no bad vibe when he does it. You know what I mean? He does it to reassure himself. You know what I mean? So it's just good. Uh, uh, Reds, how happy were you to see uh, Senna Coakley pull up in an L arm bar uh, in one of his uh, MMA fights? I thought it was great. Because uh, like, obviously he's a a striker. But do you know what? He, he gets into the gear nowadays. He rolls, rolls, rolls. Like, obviously he's, he's, you know... It, it, He's not there yet with all the submissions, but he's pulling them out in, in fights. So that's that's brilliant. Like, and do you think that goes back to the confidence, Andy? Then, like, the, like he has he has the confidence to go for that submission. Yeah, I, I think I think when I think as well when he's in a fight, some people panic when they're in a fight. Some people are comfortable fighting. Like it does. Like they, they know it's only it's three three minute rounds. It's not the end of the world here. But some people go in there and they train really hard, and after two minutes they can't breathe because they panic. He sort of doesn't give a fuck. He's in there and he's like, he, he, Derby was doing arm bars and I'm warming up, and we'd only been doing that drill in the class during the week. And he said, I'm in there, I'm, I'm rolling, I'm on my back, and I see the arm bars. And I said, I remember Derby doing this. He's taking all this in the middle of the fight. So he's not putting that pressure on him. Oh, I'm in a big fight. He was just sort of in here. I think it's it, it's competition. It's like you see jiu jitsu players that are, have hundreds of jiu jitsu fights, they jump into MMA. It doesn't bother them as much. The, 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 competi- the competition experience. Well, I think that's what he has. The lads need a little bit of that. Yeah, I think that I think that's definitely a thing. Like you know, I mean, some some of these guys they have all the talent in the world, and you hear it all the yeah. way up to the UFC level that people like you know they might be the biggest killer in the gym, but then when the bright lights shine, they don't yeah. perform to their fullest talent. So, um, ho- hopefully, yeah. hopefully they can flip that switch in twenty twenty three, and we can yeah. see the best for themselves because that's what that's what we want to see for for all the gyms and all the Irish athletes that we want to see them. Yeah. You know, the best people go out there and give their best performance and whoever the best man is uh, on the night, so be it. But uh, as you say, Andy, you just want to go in there and see everyone give their 110%. Yeah, yeah, we have a big enough squad. The squad is sort of rebuilding this year, last year. We have a big squad to hit this year. And look, it's results I want to be. The great start of the year. Like mm. We're on fire to start of the year. World champion, I think between the affiliates now, we took seven medals at the Euro Championships and then we were taking belts in the D and Jamie belts. And then we had a bit of a fall there near the end. Only mm. for James um, keeping things on the pro ranks that kept us sort of up there, you know. But I think we could be doing a lot more than what we did. And do you think uh, we are we yourself now solely focused on Team Rhino? Do you think there'll be more uh, cross training between the affiliate gyms? Yeah, well, we always do anyway. We just don't. We, we weren't pushing it as much. So the lads from Derry come down and, and Alma come down a lot. Um, Solomon's up with us in Dublin two or three days a week as well from Warham. So, yeah, there will be a lot more of them. Probably every, every four or five weeks will be a session on for the whole team. We will be back doing the running, which we used to do for years. We stopped doing, we'll be doing that as well. And, um, like tonight, everyone's back tonight and it's 10 rounds of sparring tonight and 10 rounds of rolling. That's what training is tonight. There's no teaching. That's what we're just getting stuck into. Starting the year off, how we mean to go on. You know, we're going to punish everyone tonight. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's it, Reds are, uh, what's it called? Uh, no, no one should lose a fight due to bad cardio, should they? You know, no. the, the, the two things I used to, uh, I took away for uh, when I was fighting, I always listened to it, was uh, I think GSP said, said, the only time you should ever worry about going down to the fight, if you're walking down, and if you worry about it, it means you haven't done enough with your cardio. So if you're thinking about, have I done enough? It means you haven't done enough. That shouldn't be an issue going into the fight. And Randy yeah. Couture then said, uh, th- th- you can't control if you get knocked out. I mean, you can prep all, as best you can. It's the only thing you can control how fit you go in and, and prepped into that fight. So fitness is a big thing for me. That's an enemy for it. I never used to get tired yeah. around. You know, so uh, big, big, big emphasis on that for the lads this year. Yeah. So and you just, just, you? just, uh, yeah, just as he says that, that's one thing why I wasn't too annoyed with the two guys getting knocked out in Cage Warriors in London that night. Like it was for me, it was a a free, a freak night, a freak night for us. And how the night. only one we have. It was like it was mental. Like Paddy went in and had had lost a good bit of weight, was looking good. He got caught. What can you do? You get caught, you get caught. Derby got caught. The man even had his eyes closed, thrown over that punch over the top. You know, he got caught, he got wobbled. Um, Derby thought it was a bad stoppage, good stoppage. A young guy, he's a big career ahead of him. 
what's the point in getting fucking dropped and then another shot comes in and you've like a hat and reds or burst eye socket and now smashed the bits. So look, that that was a freak night. He got knocked out. We couldn't do anything about it. Couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, exactly. So that's the thing. I think for for Adam, I think like you know he'll be more wary of the overhand right going forward, especially being a tall. Yeah, but you know, you know what he was weapon. doing? He 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 wasn't himself in there in that cage, and that's why I want to put yeah. a bit more time into the gym. Um, well, he, he was away a good bit training, and he wasn't. Adam is a very nice guy, right? He's a nice kid. He's not a bad kid. He hasn't got an attitude, so he was trying this thing of staring the guy down and saying stuff over to him. Adam doesn't do that. He doesn't have to do that. He's Cool, sits back and relaxes. So he was our character for that fight. That fucks up your fight because you're not emotionally attached to it. Your emotions are taken. I kept trying to say to him, calm your emotions down. You know, so he was, he wasn't, he wasn't prepped the way he usually is in that cage. And um, Paddy got, Paddy got, got caught. I didn't mind that. You know what I mean? But it, it's, it's be, be yourself. Don't try and be someone else. Don't try and be someone else. And uh, will we see uh, Paddy Wilkinson if, if he returns to the gym? Will we see him at lightweight next time out. Lightweight, yeah, lightweight, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. 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 Another thing was... You know, so that kid is fucking pa- is talented. Does me head and I message him all the time, get his ass out. You know, there's only so much calling you can do. But he could go the whole way with a good kick in the ass. You know, he's knockout power. He comes up to wrestle and he puts fellas through the bloody floor. You know, he's a talented kid. He just needs to, to believe that in himself. Because what's going to happen is he's going to wake up one day, he's going to be 40 years of age, and he's going to say, fuck, it's too late. Yeah, I should have would have caught it by the sounds of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sorry, Barry, are you going to say something? Yeah, I was going to ask, like, obviously you went over to the UFC with Dean Barry as well, and then after that fight, he said he actually wanted to take on the guy, uh, Pr- Prince. Was it Prince that beat Paddy? Is that something yeah. you'd like to see happen in Cage Warriors, maybe? I, 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 Dean would need to come and train full, full with his force and train. I know uh, Dean's been all over the place when he has a job, and he messaged me now and again. I think he's going up and away for jiu-jitsu. But he needs to just get back regular training. Then, then have a fight. Like he's another fellow that's very talented. Very talented. But you just have to have that uh, little bit of drive. And that's one thing this year. Uh, we Seth and Reds had this discussion the other day. We ha- had them all out running. I said, I said to them, I want them out. Stevens is day. We're running. We did 11K through the trails, up and down hills. It was tough as nails. I didn't give a shit if you did 1K, you done 11K. Once you turned up, a lot of guys turned up there that day. You know, it showed me they wanted it. We did the same Stevens day with a great run Stevens day. You know, and it was, uh, you know, people show. Sorry, New Year's Eve, and yeah. um, people uh, showed he wanted it, wanted it. You know, so Dean has to show me now he wants it. So if he, I'm going to chat with him tonight. If he wants to fight, and he wants to fight in that cage warrior show against that guy, um, he's got to pull it out. I think he has a bit of big news coming anyway. I won't say it. You can ring him and ask him, mm. but he's on to me about a bit, bit of big news coming. And I told him, well, you got to get the finger out, and you got to get into the gym, you got to start sparring, you got to start training. Yeah, and does, does one ever come more point where... for the bad guy. <laughs> does it ever does it ever come point Andy where like you, you'd almost have to tell someone no if they don't show up enough that like yeah well that's 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 fight. it now that's it yeah, now yeah. we had this discussion yeah. uh, Siri and Reds have been saying to me all year long I've gone too soft because usually I will be a little bit more vocal in the gym with the lads and if the lads weren't putting the work in you know I'd I'd be on the case uh, like I used to give Reds and Siri a terrible time and. I'd be watching, I'd have people out spying on them. I rang Siri one day, I told me to get out of the Chinese in, in, in Fringless. I had, had someone, one, one of my spies, one of my spies seen him and rang me, you know, and I would, I won't the tell you what I would say. Balls. Yeah, I won't tell you what I would say to them in the gym, or, but I would be, I wouldn't be the nice guy I am now, Ross. See them very mellow and nice, and Reds would tell you. Yeah. So this year, Reds are things no, are going a bit soft. Nice yeah, we're outlaw training. It's uh, taking his testosterone out of him, so we uh, need to get him back. Yeah, he needs to be back lifting the weights and giving up those yeah. triathlons, Andy. Yeah, two hundred and fifty k again on, on 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 the back, you know. But the great <laughs> thing is, Andy Ryan's back in Team Rhino full time, and so is the Red Man as well. And we cannot wait to see Rezer back in the mic in Dublin as well, Ross. Yep, yeah, yeah, it's going. It's going to be an absolute great one, uh, lads. Thanks a million for your time. Appreciate it as always. Two absolute gents, legends of the Irish MMA game. Um, appreciate your time. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button to not miss any energized shows. And as always, stay, stay energized. energized. Energized show up the Irish. And sussing you guys a couple of times. I've seen a couple of clips. I think you've done some interviews with Dylan Moran and that. But I, I, I saw. So keep going. Keep up the good work, guys.